Hey guys, Crazy Aaron here. Are you ready for another episode of the Crazy Aaron Show? Well, we've got a treasure packed one for you today. So let's get started. If you missed our last episode, well, check out the video archive. I took requests and made whatever Thinking Putty you asked for using our holographic Mixed By Me Thinking Putty kit. We made all different kinds of new putty. Today, we're going to do a couple different things. Something that pirates would need to do if they were sailing the ocean blue. What kind of things? Well, first, they love to look for treasure and we're going to find some for sure. Second, they need to figure out where they are. And to do that, a sundial comes in handy. We're going to check out some cool sundials and make our own. So make sure you have that thinking putty ready. Yes, you can make a sundial with thinking putty. What I did is I took my tiger's eye thinking putty and I made it into something of a, a right angle triangle like this. So it's got a nice squared off side here and I'm going to put it up and it's going to cast a shadow and you can see that shadow here. Now I know it's 1040 so I, as the sun moves across the sky it's going to move the shadow. So if I write here 11 and then 12, 1, 2, equally space 3, 4, 5, and then I can work backwards, 10, 9, 8. And that's about all the time that the sun is going to be in the sky today before it disappears. Now, the sun went behind the clouds a little, but I can still sort of see the shadow in this direction, right? And the sun's going to come back out. There it comes a little bit more. And we can see it's going to slowly, over time, move its way all the way across. Oh, there we go. We got some sun. So what are the problems with sundials? Well, hard to tell the time when there's clouds out. Second problem, doesn't really work well on a pirate ship because the ship is drifting and casting back and forth and up and down in so many different directions. And telling time was really important for pirates because there was no way to know exactly where you were unless you could tell what time it was. If you knew the time of the day, you could calculate how far east or west you might have traveled. So actually, check this out, guys. This is a sundial that's made with a 3D printer. So it's got all these little holes carefully, mathematically plotted and carved into it. And as a result, it actually tells digital time. It's 1040 in the morning. Isn't that something? Look at that. And if you just let it sit, it will go through the time all day. You can see it disappeared. The sun went behind the clouds. So because the rays of the sun are more diffuse, the number disappeared. But it'll come back as soon as those clouds go away. Do you want to be a cartographer? Well, I'm going to have your parents come in and participate in this one. I think what we can do is have them make a map. And then maybe you try to read the map and see if you can find something. Maybe even your parents could hide something at the end of the map so that a successful map reading would lead to our treasure. So what you might want to do is take a piece of paper, draw some adjoining rooms in your house. Basically make a map of one floor of your house. Make sure this is an area that your kids know well. Um, you might want to draw some, not only the walls, but maybe some of the furniture the starting point. That's where we're going to begin. Now, go hide some treasure or a toy or prize or something somewhere and mark it on the map. Now, hand over that map. Let's see if they can't read the map and find what you are looking for. Let's take that map making up to another level. Now we're going to go outside your house. So 
take that piece of paper, take a fresh one and draw your house and its location and maybe some streets, some you know different things in the neighborhood, maybe a few things that are special. Maybe there's a playground nearby or a big tree or a special rock. Put those on the map and do the same thing. Maybe this time, not so much for treasure, but to find uh, maybe your special favorite spot or maybe there's a tree that's flowering, something that's really beautiful, a destination. Now, get together, you're gonna go outside and head along the map. See if you can follow that 2D representation. You know, maps are so obvious and simple in sort of today's modern world, it's hard to realize you have to learn how to read a map. And on top of that, it took humans hundreds of thousands of years before they even came up with the idea of taking the world from the perspective of our eyes and turning it into a bird's eye view on a map where you could go from A to B to C. All right, now let's hunt for some treasure. I have here a whole box of treasure surprise thinking putty. Let's open a couple and see what we can find. And I will tell you some of the stories as we go along. Ceylon Sapphire, a beautiful thinking putty. All right, let's see, take the heat seal off here. These are new, I don't know what I'm opening. And we're gonna peel this back. Okay, open it up. Ah, oh, pure platinum. Pirates always like precious gems and precious metals. And platinum, although it wasn't particularly popular during pirate times, actually today is incredibly popular because platinum has so many incredible industrial uses. It's in your car. It's in the catalytic converter that cleans up the exhaust so that we can breathe cleaner air. It's in lots of different things. So let's open this next one here. I'm gonna peel this back. Ghost ship, ghost ship. Back in pirate days, there was talk of all kinds of ghost ships, like the Flying Dutchman, a ship with no sailors that would just sail around, or maybe they were ghost sailors, doomed to sail the ocean seas until the end of time. Any good pirate, seeing a ghost ship would run the other way, absolutely. Maybe even the Marie Celeste, a mystery ship that nobody knows what happened to her crew. All right, let's open another one. Mmm, <gasps> black pearl. We all know about white pearls and maybe even rose pearls, but a black pearl is a rare one indeed. And here it is in the treasure surprise. Let's do one more. And peel back that label. What are we gonna find? I'm excited. Mmm, <gasps> Persian emerald. Definitely part of a pirate's favorite. Let's do another one. Emeralds are interesting because emeralds and rubies are all the same mineral, corundum, which is to say aluminum oxide. It doesn't sound that exciting when I say aluminum oxide, basically aluminum rust. But when it forms into a mineral like that, and then you get different impurities, that's different metals that get in and disrupt that crystal structure like we've talked about, crystals, uh, you get different colors. All right, let's see, this one here, we're gonna peel off the label and what do we get? <gasps> Tiger's eye. Oh, a beautiful, beautiful mineral. A mineral that has a shape to it, has lines inside it, right? That's what creates the eye of the tiger's eye. It catches the light based on how it was formed in different layers. Let's do another. Peel off the heat seal and let's peel back the mystery label. <gasps> what are we gonna find? Burmese ruby. Oh, very, very beautiful. Rubies from Burma, or as it's known, was known uh, before as uh, Myanmar is the name of the country now. 
very, very prized. Beautiful, beautiful gems. I'll do one more here. Let's open this, peel it back. <gasps> what do we have? What do we have? <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, this one looks like a mysterious crystal skull. Crystal skulls were rumored to be these incredibly rare and magical things found in the jungles of South America. The kind of thing that Indiana Jones would go looking for. Now, of course, with anything, once the word gets out to the local people that those foreigners, those people from far away are willing to pay lots of money for something like a crystal skull, well, guess what someone does? They go find some crystal and they make it into a skull and they sell it and they will tell all kinds of fantabulous stories about how the skull is from a secret ancient civilization with incredible powers to get people's imagination going. And hopefully they'll pay even more money for the next crystal skull, which gets discovered. Of course, if you'd like to give Treasure Surprise a go on your own or order any of our Thinking Putty products, check out our website, puttyworld.com, head over to Amazon, or more importantly, take this opportunity to support your local specialty toy store. All right, I've got time for a letter. I've got one here from uh, the Budaji family. Let's see here what we've got. Let's see what came in the mail. I've got a card. Don't, a birthday card for Crazy Aaron. It was my birthday recently. Shh, I'm not telling you when. You'll have to figure that out on your own. Crazy Aaron, happy birthday from Lucas. Wow, thank you so much, Lucas. I really appreciate it. And you included a note, which I will, let's see here. Dear Aaron, my name is Lucas. I love your putty so much. I have a question. Uh, I think you will not mind answering. Do you ever drive your DeLorean to work? Well, not very often. Sometimes on the weekends, if I'm coming to do an event at our store, I kind of feel like it's, if you drive a car like a DeLorean every single day, it loses some of its magic wow. But if you bring it out every once in a while, always leave them wanting more, it maintains its magic charm. So thanks so much, Lucas. Uh, you have another question here. How much putty do you make in a year? Well, that's a crazy Aaron secret, but I can tell you, it is way, way more than I ever could have imagined when I started making Thinking Putty. Every day I walk in here and it blows my mind. Well, if you'd like to have a letter read, online, read on our show or get a personal written response from me, write to Crazy Aaron, 700 East Main Street, Norristown, PA, 19401. With that, I'll say, ah, bye bye, and I'll see you next time.